Hey guys, it's Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today we're looking at one of the best alternatives to Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop and it's called ACDC Photo Studio 2024. This brand new version just came out and it has some pretty useful AI based editing tools. Let's jump right into it. Now over the years, we have reviewed ACDC software a few times on our channel and with each new version of the software, it not only gets more and more powerful, but the user interface and intuitiveness of their software has actually made switching over from Adobe pretty easy. Now in this short little review video, I'm gonna be looking at Photo Studio Ultimate 2024, which is ACDC's flagship editing software, mainly aimed at professional photographers. They do make a few other versions at a lower price point that might appeal to hobbyists, graphic designers, or just normal people who need a photo editor for like their business or maybe just their family at home. The ultimate version that I'm gonna be using is their deluxe version, but it has all of the latest features. Now, normally I talk about pricing at the end of the video, but I think with ACDC software, a lot of the value actually comes in the pricing model that they've developed. So if I go over here to B&H Photo, they sell Lightroom and Photoshop by Adobe for a subscription of $119 a year. That comes out to about $10 a month. ACDC also has a subscription model. Theirs is $89 a year, which I think is pretty competitive. But the real advantage is for someone who doesn't need all the bells and whistles updated every single month and just wants to own a powerful photo editor perpetually without being tied to a subscription. Now Adobe, for whatever reason, they've completely moved away from the single purchase option. You can only subscribe to it. Um, I think that's kind of a mistake, but that's the way they've gone. With ACDC, you can download an entire copy unlocked and use it perpetually. And it's just $149. So I think that's a really good deal. And what's great about Photo Studio Ultimate, as you'll soon see, is it's kind of like Lightroom and Photoshop all in one packaged software. So if you just need something to edit raw files, say you're editing a wedding or you're batching out a bunch of images, you can do that. Or if you like skin retouching and cloning and dodging and burning and maybe even compositing multiple images together, you can also do that in Photo Studio 2024. Now, as always, we do get special deals for S-Stoppers readers. So if you wanna download this software or subscribe to it, click the link in the description. You can also go down there and do a free trial to see if it's something that you even like, if you just wanna test it out. But let's jump right into it now and show some of the new features that you can find in the Ultimate 2024 version of the software. First off, there's a lot of graphical user interface changes that make it a lot more intuitive and easy to use. And if you know me, I like things intuitive. And they also have some really cool AI features as well. So here we are in ACDC's Photo Studio Ultimate 2024. And right now I've just imported a few images that are on my computer that I've taken or that I'm in. And uh, if you see up here at the top, I'm under the manage setting. And under manage, you can do a bunch of cool things. They now have this new feature called AI keywords. Let me just talk about this really quick. It's not something that I'm super excited about, but once I realize what it does, it is pretty exciting. When you import your images into Photo Studio, it's going to automatically look at every image and then AI is going to determine the best keywords that fit those images and then automatically tag your photos. You can then import those keywords, add your own keywords, and what's great about this is if you ever export your files and then put them on the internet, you know that Facebook and Instagram and Google, they all use the metadata in your images to help reference different files and also send traffic to your website. So having really good keywords on your images is extremely important, but I know for me, I never sit down and type all of those in. It's always a big pain. And then I'm always there stuck thinking like, what are some good keywords for these photos? ACDC does that automatically for you. So you can just import them in, add your own, batch them out. And if you also wanna use these keywords in other photo editors, you can convert them to the IPTC format, which is just kind of a standardized version of the metadata keywords. And so that way they'll import into other file systems that you might use as well. Let's jump into develop and the develop module, as you'll see here as it opens up, it's very similar to Lightroom. I mean, this is very similar to Lightroom. And so you have your film strip down here on the bottom and you can click through with different photos. And we have a bunch of new things that you can do. The biggest one and the most exciting thing is the masking. Maybe a year ago, Adobe Lightroom released AI masking where you can do really complex masking right there 
in Lightroom, which was something you kind of had to jump into Photoshop to do. And I have to say, it is a complete game changer. I don't know about you guys, but for me, it has changed the way that I edit photos. It's changed the way that I take photos, knowing that I can now mask the background and the subject separately. And so now that this feature is available here in Photo Studio, that's a huge game changer for the software because I really think it's that important of a tool. So here's an image that I have here. It's kind of an engagement session. Let's go up here and do AI background. I can just click on that. It's immediately making a mask for my background. You can see it selected it in red there. I can turn off that mask or turn it on right here. Let's go ahead and turn it off. And then now what I can do is I can adjust the exposure. So this image was shot with flash, so I was able to really darken the background and get my subject to pop off of it. But if I wanted to darken it a little bit more, I could make it almost look like a nighttime shot. Or if I feel like that's a little too moody, I can now brighten it up. And you know, I'm starting to get that uh, cyan cast, so I can come in here under color temperature, and maybe I wanna warm that up. Maybe I wanna push it a little bit more towards magenta, something like that, I don't know. And then I could also desaturate it just a little bit. Maybe that's just a little too much. And now this image sort of looks a little bit more sunny and less dramatic. If I feel like I wanna edit the people, I could either come down here and duplicate the mask and then invert it, or let's just add a new mask. I can hit the plus symbol and it's gonna give me a drop down menu with the same AI options that we just had. So let's select, select subject. In theory, this should be just the inverse of the background, but let's see what it does turn on our mask and look at that. I mean, besides this little bit of railing, which you could argue is the subject as well, it has made a mask that is way better than anything I would have done. And just like the previous mask, I might wanna come up here and maybe I wanna brighten them up just a bit. Increase the saturation, maybe increase the warmth just a bit. And if I come up here, I can turn on and off the masking and look how different that is. I mean, I have an image that's really dramatic that looks like it was shot you know, at twilight or something. And then just by doing two masks and playing around with the color temperature and stuff on the, uh, the subject and background, I now have an image that almost looks like it was taken earlier in the day. So that is extremely powerful and it's something that I use all the time now. I really can't imagine editing without this tool. Of course, you can also take a brush and just like always, you can add to your mask. The one thing that I don't see that's in here that I wish they would add soon is Photoshop has that intersect option where you could take, say, your subject, and then you could add a secondary mask, maybe a gradient, so that the highlights and the exposure that I'm adding only apply to the top part of the image, and then it intersects and it, it adds that second gradient so that the effects are a little bit less on the lower part of the body. I wish that they would add that because I do find that I use that quite a bit, but it is pretty easy to come in here like with another gradient and just add a secondary mask that you can then adjust and put it on top. So it's not a deal breaker, but I do wish that they'd have that intersect feature. While we're talking about selection tools, they also have AI Sky, which sometimes is the background. Let's go ahead and click this and see what it does in real time. Literally gonna take like five seconds. Look at that. And it does a pretty good selection of the sky. And just like the other image, you know, of course I could change, you know, the exposure, change the warmth, make it more blue. You can do all kinds of different things to the sky there. So really easy as well. So that's the develop setting and the new AI tools that you can do right there. This is probably most similar to Lightroom. You have your film strip down here. You could go and cull an entire shoot or an entire event or a wedding or something like that. And then you could also batch all of those edits across all of your images. Let's now jump into the edit feature, which is up here on the top right. And this is gonna be more like Photoshop where we have different layers. I could come down here and make an adjustment layer of say exposure. And then now with the exposure settings, I could brighten and add contrast to the layer itself. And then using a brush, I could come in here and start painting out different parts of that layer adjustment. So very similar to what you do in Photoshop. They have updated the brush tool. So now you have the more traditional feathering, um, the opacity and the flow. And so basically opacity is the amount of blackness that will come. So if I sit here and brush this for a few seconds, you can see the mask over here is going completely black at a flow of 100%. If I only ever wanted it to go to 20%, I could lower the opacity there. And then now when I brush it, it's only going to max out at 20%, which is similar to like using a Wacom tablet or something like that. So the, uh, the tools on the brush have been improved. Let me go ahead and delete that layer mask. 
And check this out. We can come up here to Sky Replacement, which is kind of like the AI Sky tool where it's going to select the sky, but now we can actually replace it. There's a ton of software that already does this, but it's nice that you can now do this in Photo Studio. So here we have a bunch of different skies that they give us. So I could just drop in something that looks a little extreme. But what's cool is you can come down here to custom. I can add a bunch of different skies that you might have. These skies that I'm gonna add are from Mike Kelly's Sky Library. It's a tutorial that you can find on fstoppers.com slash store. I believe he gives out, I can tell you right here, he gives out 225 raw files. I've converted them to JPEG here. But you can use these files any way that you want in your own photography, they're license free. And once we've imported these in, I can now use one of our own custom skies to put in the background. The key with good sky replacement is finding one that matches the scene that you're already working in. So because the light's coming from the direction of the camera, I wanna find something kind of similar. Something like this could work. I can now come down here to scale and shrink this down. I don't wanna shrink it down too much or you're gonna see the edge. And then I can place it more with the vertical position. The way we've designed the sky library is we have the horizons showing in every single image. So I want to just bring down the horizon just below my real horizon. And once we have this in place, we might wanna mess with the temperature. That's a little too warm for the scene. So maybe I would bring this down. Of course, I could open the raw file and really correct the white balance correctly. But something like that looks pretty good. And then what's great that a lot of other software doesn't do is it allows me to hit output as layers, let's hit done. And this is now gonna export this back into our edit part of the software. I now have our sky replacement right here on this layer. And I can just select the layer mask, shrink my brush down, select black. And then I can just paint over her face to fix that one little area where the sky is kind of creeping in where the adjustment wasn't perfect. And now I can tweak this exactly how I want, or I could even turn it off and go back to the original sky that we had. This is a pretty cool feature. So here's a wedding reception image that I took at one of my weddings. I can come up here to face edit. Sometimes, especially when you're shooting, you know, events with an ultra wide angle lens and you have the camera above your head and you're just trying to get in there and get the action. If you shoot too wide, sometimes you can start to get like weird warping on the sides and people in the middle might look really far away. Some really strange things can happen and you might find yourself in a situation where you need to start adjusting or you would like to start adjusting people's eyes and then kind of remove the distortion and make people look a little bit normal. If you're not shooting with a wide angle lens and you're just doing a portrait session, sometimes you might find yourself wanting to edit someone's face as well. That's what this AI face edit does. But look what's so cool about it. It has identified all the people in this image each face, I can start messing with the DJ's face. I can make his face a little bit skinnier maybe, bring his jawline down. I can change his eyes. Here's the bride. I went to high school with this girl. I could, you know, maybe expand her face. Look what it's doing to the girl behind her. It's shrinking everything in a really dynamic way that looks pretty natural. I don't know that I would really ever do this with a wedding just because this is pretty time consuming, but it's really amazing that you can do all of this. Let me get out of this particular image and let's look for something that might be a little more normal. This is a more quirky image that I took in the studio. What's interesting is I can make the eyes bigger and smaller, but then I can also unclick the lock button and only control the left eye or the right eye independently. And if you're a headshot photographer and you know you've ever taken somebody's headshot, the back eye sometimes can look really small or wonky um, depending on how the camera is positioned. And so there are times where you might wanna enlarge the eye that's further away from the camera, or also if you're a headshot photographer, you notice that most people have a difference in eye shape and size. Sometimes people have an eye that's a little bit bigger or smaller. I think for me, my left eye might be just a little bit bigger. I don't know, you tell me. But I could take a picture and then I could just shrink the eye, which um, it's one of those subconscious things where when people see their eyes the same size, they tend to think that they look better than when you have that discrepancy. I mean, smile, look at that. I mean, I can really dial down. I mean, obviously she's smiling, but I can really dial in the way that her laugh lines go. Whiten teeth. I mean, she's got near perfect teeth, but you can whiten those up. Upper lip thickness. 
That's wild. Let's go to skin because this one's pretty cool. She doesn't have any real wrinkles, so I don't know that I can do anything there. But they do have smoothing, which if you go too far with this, it starts to look like a cartoon. So maybe I would probably keep this like less than 25%. And then glow. There are times, especially in portrait work outside, where maybe the light from the natural environment or your strobe light is lighting the person evenly, but you just want a little bit of pop on their face. You could accomplish that with glow. And if I go back and forth between previous and the edit, I mean, that's pretty wild. Which one do you like better? I might have gone too far with the, the mouth, but I do like what it's doing to the skin. Let's go ahead and hit done. And now finally, let me just run through one quick edit just to kind of show you what you can do with this software. Um, yesterday was my son's first birthday, and so here is an image from his first week of life. So this image was taken almost a year ago. And, you know, when you have to be in your own photos and hand the camera to somebody else, you don't always get all the settings and especially the color and white balance the way that you want it. So um, props to my wife for getting perfect focus on this image, but I think we can clean it up and make it look a little bit better. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to AI background. And as you can see, it did a pretty incredible job of selecting the background. Let's go ahead and take the mask off. And sometimes I typically like to darken the background so that your subject pops a little bit more. I think in this case, I might actually brighten the background up a little bit to make it a little more airy. And I think I'm actually gonna cool the background up a little bit. I'm also gonna add some tint to the greenery just to really make it look green. If I start to go towards the magenta, I really see it in the path behind me. So I don't like that. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit more green. Now, this image was taken with natural light, and regardless of how you use natural light and place your subject, or maybe you use flash and you can control the ambient light and then the flash a little bit separately, what I love about this technique of masking out your background and your foreground is that you can do some other things that you just can't do on location. Um, for example, clarity. I could come up here and really bump up the clarity in the background and give it a completely different look, or I can kind of blur the background a little bit more to kind of give that nice soft out of focus look, even though this was shot, um, this was shot at 2.8 to begin with, I can just pull the clarity down a little bit to make it even softer. Play with the contrast, that looks a little too extreme. Can also bring in some fill light to make it even softer. Something like that looks really good. Let's add a second mask and do subject selection. There we go, it has selected me now. And so here I might bump up the exposure just a touch, bump up the saturation a little bit. I feel like I'm losing a little color. Again, I might lower the temperature just like I did with the background. And now instead of adding green to the scene, I'm gonna add some magenta. That's just going to make our skin tones look a little bit more natural. Now in this location, I made sure to place myself really close to this open area where some nice light is gonna come on us. But in many cases, if you ever shot in a forest or a path or a park, a lot of times you have this green light from the trees hitting you and it's hitting your entire scene. It's very hard to get rid of those casts. Now, if I come in here and start moving the tint slider to the magenta side, I can start to really improve the skin tones of my son and I. And essentially what I've done here is I've added more green tint to the background and more magenta tint to us, which I think is something that's really cool with this technique. Now that I feel like I've got the color balanced, I might come down to effects here and let's go to photo effects. These are just some photo effects that they have built in here. I'm going to go to Chrome and let me bring down the opacity down to like 25%, somewhere right there. And now if I turn this on and off, it just kind of gives the image a final look. From here, we can go into edit. It's going to bring all of those edits that we did and develop into the editor. And then let's use everyone's favorite tool, the liquify tool. And I'm pretty vain, so let me go ahead and just uh, pull in my waist a little bit. My son will never know that I wasn't quite as in shape when he was born. Another thing that kind of drives me crazy is the uh, shirt sneaking up underneath. So I'm just going to shorten those just a little bit, push them up. And of course, let's uh, fix the hair a little bit. All right, we're good here. Let's hit done. I boom. I think we have an image ready to be printed. Look at that. So maybe I'll print this off 
for my son for his first birthday, which was yesterday, and be a father that gives their son a gift a day late. Guess what? He won't know. <laughs> so anyway, that is Photo Studio Ultimate 2024 by ACDC. Um, if nothing else, if you guys are just tired of paying those monthly fees to Adobe and you're looking for a powerful photo editor that does a little bit of everything and also now has these AI features built into it, I think this is definitely worth checking out. Like I said at the beginning of the video, you can just click the link in the description. You can download the trial and try it out for free. You can also uh, subscribe if you want to do that. But I think the biggest savings is just to outright buy the software. $149, you can use it forever. You do get to update that software within that year, but you know, of course they're gonna release 2025 and then 2026. I don't believe you're gonna just be able to download the next version of the software whenever that does come out, but ACDC has been really good at offering huge discounts if you have bought their previous software. So you can get this for $149, and then I'm not gonna quote you a price, but in two or three years, if you decide to update to the newest features, you know, you'll be able to update for a lot less money than a lot of other software out there. And you're not gonna have to subscribe for month after month after month, year after year after year. That can definitely add up. I am scared to think how much money I have paid Adobe in their subscriptions. So um, definitely check that out. I think this is a cool piece of software. I love how intuitive it is. I love how it's laid out. It runs really quick. I can't say that about all the other software that we've reviewed over the years, but this one does seem to get it pretty good. Um, if you're not a photographer and you're just somebody who likes to edit photos casually, maybe Ultimate isn't the right one for you. Maybe you can downgrade to one of the more simple softwares, and of course those are gonna be a little bit cheaper too. So if you guys enjoy videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel below. Go ahead and hit the bell, but more importantly, leave a comment in this video and then click on any other F-Stoppers video at the end of this video to help us out. We are trying to get to 1 million subscribers and getting over that finish line has taken us a long time this last year. So I think we're about five or 6,000 people away from that milestone and I would love to hit it before the end of the year. So help us out there. If you're just starting in photography or maybe you're looking to learn from a photographer who's one of the best photographers in a specific genre, head over to fstoppers.com slash store where you can check out our full length photography tutorials. We have tutorials on everything that you could imagine from landscapes to macro photography, portraits, headshots, swimwear, weddings, the list goes on and on. So definitely go over and check that out. You can use YouTube to save, I believe 15% off on any tutorial in our store. And finally, if you're the type of photographer who thinks you're great and really competitive, check out fstoppers.com slash contest. We have just revamped our critique the community and we've added new sponsors that are giving away incredible prizes and typically there's like a thousand to two thousand entries and you're capable of putting three photos in so do the math there you actually have like a one in three or four hundred chance of winning that's pretty good so definitely check that out i'm going to keep my eye on acdc to see what their next photo studio looks like and i'll probably review that down the road but i'm really excited what they've been doing with this software suite and i think it's a great great alternative i think this might be the best competitor to photoshop and lightroom that's out there so congrats guys on building a really cool piece of software i gotta get out of here but i will see you guys very very soon